a portion of this video is sponsored by LastPass. Welcome back to Coping With Your iPhone. James, how do you deal with all the useless, seldom used, or bloatware apps that clutter up your home screen? Mm -hmm, great question. Well, you know, it's really no problem. All I do is I put them all into one folder that I call useless garbage, and then I just never go in there again. And it only takes up one square on my home screen. One square? One square. Just one. <laughs> wow. That's great. And. And how about you, Riley? Well, that's a great method, but what I do is I put all my useless apps on their own special page in the back, and I just never swipe there. It just doesn't ever go there. Nope. You don't have to look at it at all. It's like it's not there. That's terrific. <laughs> oh, thank Oh, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> iPhones are just, they're so easy to use, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Join us again next week when I'll be sharing my favorite dongle recipe. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. We did a video on 10 reasons iPhones are better, and now Android's getting the same treatment. After this message from our sponsor, LastPass. LastPass relieves the burden of trying to remember all your passwords for every website. Let LastPass fill in the passwords for you. Learn more at the end of the video or through the link below. So once again, we've leaned on our community to compile our list and, surprise, surprise, the number one most commonly cited perk of Android is customization. Not only does Android let you put your app icons wherever you want, including places you can actually reach, use non-hamstrung third-party keyboards, uh, SwiftKey on iOS is just truly awful, and change your default browser to something other than Safari, it even lets you change what's called the launcher, which is basically how your desktop looks and feels. For example, the Google Pixel launcher has the app drawer available from a swipe up and the Google Now feed from a swipe right. But you don't need to have a Pixel to make your phone look like this. Other Android phones can just download the Pixel launcher or one of the hundreds of other launchers from the Play Store, which, whoa, Microsoft launcher? Does anyone use that? 10 million downloads? The, look, the point is that it's customizable. And while it is true that you can take more control of your iPhone by jailbreaking it, that basically just unlocks features that Android users already get out of the box. And Android offers an even deeper level of customization if you root your phone and install custom ROMs, which are basically alternative firmware, with many of them created for free by members of the open source community. And they allow you to do all kinds of crazy things, like removing bloatware, overclocking for better gaming performance, underclocking to extend battery life, installing updates as soon as they become available instead of waiting for the OEM to push them, or even just changing what color your notification light flashes. Speaking of freedom, whereas unjailbroken iPhones force you to download any and all apps from the App Store, on Android you can, number two, completely bypass the Play Store by sideloading apps. As many of you no doubt learned when you installed Fortnite for Android, apps are just .apk files, and they can be downloaded and installed directly on any Android phone, as long as you've enabled the capability in your phone settings first. Apps that are sideloaded don't have to adhere to the Play Store's rules, so some of them can be sketchy. But there are cases where the decision to go off Play Store was driven by other reasons, like the developer not wanting to give 30% of their revenue to Google, or wanting to release a casino app that lets you gamble with real currency, or just wanting to free the nipple, as it were. The next level is that you can also sideload apps that are themselves app stores. So you can actually have more than one app store on your phone. For example, the Amazon App Store used to let you download one paid app per day for free. Like there's no reason to miss out on stuff like that. And from a developer perspective, alternative and often smaller app stores let you target users of a specific niche or region. I mean, the Google Play Store is not accessible at all in China without a VPN. So if you want to access the Chinese market, you're going to have to submit your app to Tencent My App or Baidu Mobile Assistant. 
Number three took me a little bit by surprise, interaction with the desktop. Now, when you plug an Android device into a PC, it acts like pretty much any other USB device or flash drive, and you can even use a conventional drag and drop interface to access both its onboard memory and an external storage device, such as a micro SD card. By contrast, iPhones must interface with the desktop via intermediary software, namely iTunes. Now, to be clear, it is possible to be an iPhone user for years without ever needing iTunes, relying on iCloud for backup and downloading stuff directly to your phone using the Files app, which came out with iOS 11. And thank goodness, because before that, you couldn't even download things from the internet. But if for some reason you need to connect your iPhone to a computer with a cable, like to move music from your phone to your computer, then iTunes is liable to be a huge pain in the booty that prevents you from completing tasks that would otherwise be very simple. The only exception is to copy pictures from your iPhone to the computer. That you can do. And that's because your computer sees the iPhone as a read-only camera. So you can't like copy photos from your computer to your iPhone. Something I discovered recently when I tried to help my aunt move to a new iPhone. And I was like, oh, this should be easy. I'll just move all your old photos onto your, oops. Number four, similar to the software side, Android gives you infinitely more choice when it comes to hardware. Because Android is open source, the software can be found inside devices from myriad manufacturers. And this again gives you more freedom because instead of saying, well, shucks, I don't really like what they did with this year's iPhone. I guess I'll wait until next September's keynote. Competition pushes OEMs to continually innovate, allowing consumers to vote with their wallets on the features that they care about. Headphone jacks, stereo speakers, expandable storage, screens without notches, all these treasures and more await. And of course, this plurality of devices represents, number five, different price points. Not everyone wants to or even can spend 700, 800, 1500 dollars on a phone. There are 400 million smartphone users in India and only 3% of them have iPhones. It's for a reason. At $750, the budget iPhone is price prohibitive for millions of people. But on Android, there's a device for everyone. Number six is split screen multitasking. Provided that you're using supported apps, Android lets you divide your screen in two. So you can say, read an article while you watch a Twitch stream. It's a feature that some power users cannot live without, while others like myself hardly bother using it. But hey, at least we have the option. The really bizarre thing here is that iPads got support for split view with 2017's iOS 11 including the 7.9 inch iPad mini. But, 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 but no, you can't use split view on your 6.5 inch iPhone XS Max because screw you, Apple doesn't think you should be able to. Number seven, USB type C. Adoption of USB-C is really picking up steam now and having a standard interface on your devices is the bee's knees because in theory, nearly every device in your house could use the same cables. I brought one charger with me on my last trip and I was able to use it for my phone, my laptop and my switch. Awesome. But what's weird is that while I could charge all of those things, including a MacBook if I had one, but it won't work with the iPhone. Now granted, in the past, the iPhone's lightning connector was definitely superior to USB micro B. It's reversible and can handle more power. But USB-C has closed the gap and even surpassed lightning with many more features and much higher data transfer speeds. And Apple honestly just looks kind of silly for not supporting it. All of their devices could have the same port for the first time ever, but no. Number eight. Android has more unlock options. You can unlock your phone with a code, a pattern, your face, your eye, or your fingerprint, depending on your device, of course. And each method has its place depending on context. A fingerprint reader, whether you prefer it on the front, side, back, or even under the screen glass, is still more convenient than facial recognition in some cases. But then face unlock is great to have too, and even passwords have their place. What doesn't have a place is fixing something that ain't broken. I loved 
touch ID, and I gave Apple a ton of praise for it, but then they went and took it away, probably forever, even though it would have been so awesome to have the Apple logo just work as a stealthy fingerprint reader. Like, it's just sad that they didn't do that, seriously. Number nine, Android has a universal back button. Now, many of the Apple faithful, and even some Android users might find this point controversial, but hear me out. Yes, you can go back on an iPhone, either by swiping, pressing the button in the header, or using Safari's back button on the bottom when it's visible. Which method you use is totally dependent on the app. But it's not the inconsistency here that I have a problem with. It's the positioning. The back button is easy to reach on Android because it's right here by your thumb. And what's cool is that on many phones, you can even choose which side you want it on. But on the iPhone, right-handed people, so that is most of us, have to reach all the way across our increasingly ginormous screens to initiate a swipe or even worse, way up to the top to reach the button. Now, back when iPhones were small one-handed devices, that was fine, but this was something I criticized back when they launched the iPhone 6 and they still haven't fixed it. It's just not ergonomic. I mean, at least they let you swipe right from anywhere on the home screen. And finally, number 10, OLED screens. Yes, iPhones do finally have OLED screens now, starting from 2017's iPhone 10. And while it looks like all models will have OLED starting in 2020, right now, their cheapest model still sports an LCD. Meanwhile on Android, OLED screens are starting to appear even on mid-range devices, and they actually use it. For some reason, Apple still has not given its users always-on display functionality, while some Android brands have already started expanding the color and interactivity even of their always-on screen locks. Now, I am not saying Android is perfect. Software updates? Hey, with some handset makers, forget about it. Random battery drain? I have complained about that on this phone it, in particular, the one that is my daily driver. Manufacturer spying scandals. Those have happened. And also just the fact that there's kind of always, it always seems like there's a compromise. Like there's no one perfect device that has everything that you want. There's always some kind of an issue. The point I'm trying to make here is that there are just plenty of reasons to buy an Android, just like there are plenty of reasons to buy an iPhone. And one reason to enjoy your use of either of them is the sponsor of this portion of the video, LastPass. LastPass relieves the trouble of remembering your passwords and reduces your anxiety about getting locked out of accounts and then like waiting for that password reset email. You won't need to write down, remember, or reset your passwords anymore because LastPass allows you to keep track of them in a way that is safe and secure. There is no cap on your password storage. They have password breach alert, it doesn't only work on mobile, it works on the desktop as well with extensions for the major browsers that make it just so easy to automatically populate, not just passwords, but even things like credit card numbers. It's flipping awesome, it just happens automatically. And you guys don't have to take my word for it. You can click the link below to try out LastPass for yourself. So thanks for watching guys. If this video upset you, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured. Frankly, we don't care which one you buy at the link in the video description. Also linked down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join. Thanks Linus. Thanks. This was just great. I really loved it. <laughs> You know what I love? Camera bumps. Thanks, Apple, for bringing this innovation to the industry. You're so courageous. Oh, great. Here's your wallet. Oi.